again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hey guys, I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are. This has been one hot summer. Like it is just hot. I was so thankful that it rained last night. It was quite a it little was, I mean, deluge. Well, I, I mean, I term. water my tomato plants and there's this one one perennial that I feel bad for because it looks like it's just crying every day. But I was like, okay. And then when it rained, I was like, oh, thank God. Everything's yeah. getting a drink at least. Yeah, we went down to the community garden and watered it and then yeah. it got extra. So it probably needed right. it, to it's be okay. honest. This is the first time that I can remember. So one, I'm not seeing a lot of mushrooms compared to maybe the last three years. And I think that's probably because it's so, so dry. And warm. Um, and... Our wildflowers are actually just like literally dying. Right, on they're the all. Vine. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I realize like you happening. you look at plants and you can tell that they compensate right. for the lack of to protect themselves from the heat and whatnot. Um, but it's still, I feel bad for them. So it's been. Uh, I've been traveling. You've been here. You've been holding down the fort. Thank you I for didn't, that. We didn't tape last week. Oh, I you didn't. didn't? Okay. Well, even hi guys. Welcome back then. Um, <laughs> the things I want to remember to say, so I'm going to say them now, yeah. is uh, the Dr. Phil is coming out on the 27th. So that is on Merit Media. So folks who want to actually watch it real time, you can download the app for free. It's mm -hmm. online Merit Media. Dr. Phil claims there are 80 million hmm. subscribers. I okay. don't know, uh, but you know, maybe it'll be 80 million in one if you go do it. 727, 7 central time so that's eight eastern time and then i assume it's on some kind of loop or something yeah, i don't like really me. know uh, how it all works but i did uh promise that i would tell people about it so i am telling you there you go <laughs> um yeah i'm trying to think so what did you miss and then right? what did we miss oh my god uh, well that's Trump what assassination well, uh that was a big deal yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I taped victoria so i taped right with courage because Br Brittany is on vacation with her family and so victoria asked me to sit in for Brittany, and we did i mean in the 30 you know how this goes 30 minutes goes like this when we're taping and dan watched it on facebook live this morning and he goes yeah you pretty much all talked about the secret service for 30 minutes <laughs> and i said so but yeah What's up with that? Like, can people, a couple things. One, I can't emphasize enough that despite your differences with people on views, despite not your differences, right. people's differences, uh, uh, we do not have to agree on all things policy in order for us to not be jerks to each other, right? Well, well that, but also, I mean, so today, I mean, I was in arguments with people, I would say, at least on the conservatarian side of things on X today. So I have a question for you. Let's make it philosophical. What does the golden rule mean to you? Do you, you treat people the way you want to be treated? Okay, so that's how I understand So like if it. I don't want people to be a jerk to me, I shouldn't be a jerk to them. So, so uh, ethically, according to the internet and also according to how I think we grew up and I think, you know, the it's in the Bible what, right. and Matthews, right? So regardless of where you take your source and right. what is sort of guiding how you're going to navigate through life, the golden rule is treat others as you want to be treated. Fair. Apparently, there has been a shift because we probably redefined uh, because it. Now people say the golden rule, which made my jaw drop, is treat other people the way they treat no, you. No, and I'm that's like, not no, that's not it. That is no. a perpetual completely the circle. opposite of what it is. Right, because then it's basically. So I had this this very uh, actually it was a very respectful yeah. disagreement basically on X where people. So what happened for folks who maybe aren't following as closely as this? So uh, because of the the attempted assassination mm -hmm. on Trump, right? There are all these lefties, I guess, or progressives on social media kind of saying things like, oh, you know, if only it had been two inches right, closer. Right. Which you know, is just terrible. Adv advocating for the death uh, uh, of a man. Right, doesn't matter uh, which man. It doesn't matter who, right? right? Like people are online going, gee, I wish this person had gotten killed, which is shady, okay? Right, terrible. Um, and then hit the delete uh, button on those people. And and on so Facebook. now you know libs of TikTok yeah. and some of these uh, are finding, you know, the one I saw today was an old lady who works at Home Depot who got doxxed for saying something unsavory, saying that you yeah. know she hoped that it was successful, um, 
and has now lost her job. Yep. And there's several of those. So suddenly yeah, the, okay. le- the right is doing cancel well, culture I was gonna and say, boxing, which so we were against six there was, months ago. There was an incident in Manchester, from what I understand. And I'm not going to say the person's name because it doesn't matter and I don't want to contribute to it. Total jerk. I'm going to give him that. You know what? Maybe, I mean, there's a part of me that says, you know what? If you're a total jerk to everybody, it's going to come back on you eventually because that golden rule thing. However, I'm not a fan of making the presumption that it's my decision and it's okay for me, going back to the golden rule, to try to destroy your life. So there was an incident where somebody was banned from a Facebook group, as they should have been, and other people posted where they worked and said, you know, I wonder if they're employer. And I don't know if it's true or not, but this person lost their job. And I said, I'm not okay with going after people personally. You know, I don't know that person well enough in real life to know that they're not perfect. Like maybe you're perfectly fine at your job. And the pressures become not just on what should we do about that person, but then the pressure shifts to what should that employer do based on the social media pressures of you must now do something. So it's interesting, right? Because I'm very torn about what I think the future should look like. Like on the one hand, right, the pen opticon that uh, Orwell wrote about, which is basically the old seeing eye, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea was that we would create this society that was a 100% surveillance society so everyone would know everything. If you extrapolate that dystopian literature for uh, the notion of God, say, right? So there's an omnipotent being or there's an all-knowing entity. There's something, right, that is watching you. And I guess for man, it works best when we kind of think someone's watching us because maybe that lets us behave better than our natural flawed inclinations, right? Okay, fine. But then it's kind of like, okay, so in some ways what is happening with technology is we are spinning up the pen opticon. It's this very strange combination of state surveillance Mm -hmm. and private surveillance, which the state actually is just straight up buying from the private party. So now we have basically fascism uh, in in our surveillance world. And instead of people behaving kind of better, it seems like we've made it worse. we're, we're, We're behaving worse. And so, or at least we're seeing that people behave worse. Well, so you I know think, what I, mean? I think so. So I'm trying to figure it out. So I'm like, is it because for the first time, let's say, and I'll just use X as the example, yeah. right? So people are calling X the public square. And I'm like, yes, it's the public square, or it's aspirationally trying to be the public mm-hmm. square. But currently, it kind of feels like we might be in the sandbox, or possibly even in the litter box, and we have to scale our way into up a regular... into the public square, where we, as decent humans, mm-hmm. let's say, I mean, my background's actually academia and yeah. law, right? So I'm like. Oh, give a tri- attribution. Right. Use footnotes. Give, Say when it's give someone people, else's give idea. Give people an ability to back out, out of, of their position. Um, ask Socratic questions. Put things in a, hey, have you thought about this way? All of that, right? So, so I guess what I'm saying is those of us who are in the public square part, I think should have basic rules of engagement mm-hmm. that are, hey, we argue this way. This is how right. we argue how, fairly, but there's well, rules, unwritten rules, rules of, of engagement. engagement. There is. Right. And so if you want to be in the kitty box at the children's right. table, which you apparently can do a whatever lot of people you want to, you can sling your feces yep. over there. But as you level up to where the smart people who are actually trying to make a difference, yep. we should be able to say, this is how we're yep. going to behave. And over sometimes, here. and sometimes in this box, the answer is just agreeing to not agree. To disagree. Right, we don't, when that we just don't thing? agree. I can't tell you how many times I say that to somebody. We have a whole conversation and I smile and I nod and we have the whole thing and my brain says, is this worth engaging or am I never going to get through to never. them? And I say, you know what, it's okay that we right. can disagree. But also I think that because of technology, we have been spun up into this manufactured world where we actually, it's the hubris of, of thinking we know too much. Where where everyone's like, there's there's a right answer. No, and there's lots of answers usually. So, so there are lots of answers. And you know what? And this is a hard one to swallow, is a lot of times you're right 
and it doesn't matter. Exactly. You can stand there and go, but I'm right. But that doesn't change. Whether it's an argument with your husband yep. where you are righteously like, I, I the know toilet paper has to I come this way. More, right? <laughs> right. It doesn't matter. And so what we need to do as a society is one, just kind of accept that. Maybe like a little more energy towards radical acceptance. Mm -hmm. Truly, not where you're telling yourself, well, I guess I gotta but then you're harboring all these things that still yep. come out. You just actually well, have to Well, when go, you're talking about the golden rule, go. I wrote this down because you're talking about people now twisting it to say, I treat you the way you treat me, as opposed to, like, if, so in other words, if Joe treats you like crap, it's okay to treat Joe back as crap. But now, you're, that's, but now you're treating somebody like crap. crap. So two wrongs never make a right. right. That's, the, that's like another but, thing but, that we were always told. Two to, just because he did it, doesn't mean you should do it because it was wrong when they did it. So I like, mean, honestly, uh, after, so I, mean, so I think postmodernism, uh, you know, one of the things that came out of postmodernism was like, oh, you can't talk in cliches. Like you can't say things mm -hmm. that, these truisms, you must find new no, ways to dynamically say new things, which has basically fine. led us down a, 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 a uh, not primrose path because that's good. I, I don't know, yellow some, brick road. Yeah, some, 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 path, some dark dodgy path. path. <laughs> some dark path that um, that is not serving us because there's so much language actually in the world of sort of just truism well, and no years things. as a younger person. I've been saying this for you know 30 years of my life. So when we say um, when we stereotype things. Where, where do you think stereotypes come from? Stereotypes They're usually true. Well, I was gonna say. So, just so clarification, and people can hate on me, and you can say whatever, and you can cut this and put it. Out. I don't really care anymore. I am one quarter. No, yes, I am one quarter real Irish. My grandfather grew up in Ireland, came here from Ireland. I am one quarter full blown Irish, right? There is a reason why the stereotype of Irish people is that they're a bunch of drunks. Because guess what? <laughs> a lot of... I, I, I watch movies that just portray regular Irish people and I think, yeah, I'm German. You know, like, because <laughs> I don't want to be portrayed as this bullyish, strange, drinks too much. That's what I think of when I think of Irish. And I'm Irish. So there's a reason why that stereotype got applied. It wasn't random. It wasn't somebody coming up with a plan. You can say that about all different stereotypes. But, but it's the same. Like, we were talking about this, actually, because I, I was at Freedom Fest, right, in Vegas. And so you're so caught up in the vice life, right? Mm. It's just, it, I, I, since I quit drinking, I actually find it really hard to be there. It's just... Because uh, it's just too much. Well, the sensory overload yep. when you're not cracked out is yeah. is like a lot, right? Yep. Like you're, you're just like, I mean, yep. uh, I, I feel Fair. a little special <laughs> there. But you know, we were walking around and because I'm sober, I was noticing like new vices, right? So, so part of what, what, what seems to be going on there is threefold. One is there, uh, the point system. So no one's talking about the, the, the capitalistic point systems that is basically also a social credit score. You're just opting into it, right? So all these uh, hotels and all the casinos all the points, and everything yeah. are giving people points so to, they keep coming yes. back, right? So it's a... And it's it an works. Actual, it does work. It, of course it works. I do it's, it all the time. I'm like, I can buy from you because I get 12 points. I don't know what those points mean. I did it this right? morning at William's Coffee. Yep. I got eight coffee beans and then I got 12 coffee beans. I looked at the girl, I go, I have no idea what the coffee beans give me. She goes, oh, it gets you a free coffee. And I'm like, okay. See, so it, it works. Um, I am the opposite. I'm the kind of person who still doesn't have a, actually I got one, but uh, like a frequent fr uh, I don't have a damn house I don't house like one. any of the point stuff because it's like you have to manage it. But what technology has done now is it's made it seamless to manage it. Yep. So suddenly if you do buy at Starbucks once yeah, a week. You just, it just accumulates, you're just accumulates and eventually it you and can have a coffee. Like, hey, hey, yeah. right? I agree. So they're doing that in Vegas. The Because they've sort of pivoted away from just like, you know, the prostitution and the yeah. drugs. And I mean, it, that's all still there. But it is also a little more family yeah. friendly, foodie destination. I had a fabulous, fabulous meal at Gordon Ramsay's kitchen, five course, spent way too much money. Delicious. Um, but sugar as a actual yeah. 
Lure? L lure is, is everywhere. Like, there are these ads everywhere that are literally like, I love sugar. I love sugar. I donuts, mean, there was donuts, a store donuts. called I love sugar. <laughs> Do like, everywhere. And, and being so aware of it. You know that, I forget, is it a movie or something where the guy walks and he has the goggles and he can, like, see the world for what it really yeah, is? Yeah, I don't know what or, it is, but yeah. yeah that, that sort of landscape. It feels like that. Like, you walk around. Right, and I'm just always so amazed. Aware. Like, I saw a thing the other day and it was like, something, something donuts is coming to, I don't know if it was Manchester or Nashville. And it was like, people were like, oh, my God. And I was like, who cares about a donut shop? Like, literally, my brain was like, why would I be excited about a donut shop? But that's because... We don't buy donuts. Right. Like, I, we at least. But that's the mural. It's, it's, you're, it's, it's the people who go to Dunkin' Donuts and get the, the, um, whatever it's called, regular, regular, and you watch them, sugar, and I'm like, oh my God, I'd have a, my stomach so, would be so upset. So someone said that, like, one of the regular drinks at Starbucks comes with six pumps of sh right. sugar. Right. That's what a that's regular. That's the regular. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Regular coffee at Dunkin' Donuts has like five or six, like a lot of sugars, plus that much cream. And I'm like, oh my God. So, so what's so interesting, because, you know, I kind of fell off the wagon between Porkfest and, and now, and then I did a fast, so I did the reset, so everything is back on mm. track and on balance. But like for those two weeks where I was consuming carbs and therefore sugar in a way that I haven't done mm -hmm. in years and years, you can actually feel it mm. in your noggin. Yep. Like you become a heightened in the same way when people consume too much caffeine and yep. you can be like, oh, I'm yeah, jittery I, I, and I, 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 I drank too it, much, right? yeah. And if you miss your coffee, which we did on the way back from Porkfest, and we were driving and Louis goes, I'm getting a headache, headache like, like no tomorrow. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? We didn't have coffee yeah. today and it's one o'clock. And we're both like, whoa, junkies. But, but the point being, from a physiological perspective, mm -hmm. these are addiction cycles. And they're addiction cycles that we have to identify whether it's sugar mm -hmm. or... Um, All sorts of things. You know, Salt. Uh, I mean, different people have different things. Things, right? But, but it's that sort of that loop yep. that you have to start to feel and then actually question. And that loop is tied to manufactured fear that is created by... The, by propagandists. Hmm. Like all of it feeds together because if you are unbalanced physically, you are actually easier to manipulate because it's easier to tap into. Like it's very hard to actually unsettle me. Go, well, Louis, I'm a, I'm, I mean, me, I'm a little more no, volatile, I'm like, but like Louis is very, you know. As is Dan. Dan, and so if he's on a hiccup, I mean. Then it's you. I know, I, I don't know if I've talked about it on the show. I think I've talked about it with you. So Dan and I have been taking, I can never say the right word, semaglutide. So that's the GLP-1. That's basically Ozempic, but we're not taking Ozempic. We're, something, we're taking a, a compounded version of it. And we're on probably week 12 or 13. And I have a friend who's very much into diet and extra, like she's been a health coach and everything. And I talked to her, I said, you're going to hate that I'm do taking this. And she said, no, actually I don't. Because all these things are tools and different tool. You know, if you can get from point A to point B using that tool, it's better than never getting to point B. So, but what is point B? Point B is a healthier weight and better diet. Okay. So for me, that's okay. what for me. Um, Dan won't like me saying this, but I do think Dan has a little bit more um, harder time sticking to a diet than I do. Um, but then I'm with Dan, so then I don't eat well. If right. Dan doesn't eat well, I don't eat well. So we have to make so sure you Dan guys are enabling each other. It, so, we compound each other. Yeah. So on this, I mean, in fairness, in 12, 13 weeks, I've lost 18, 20 pounds. So I was like, holy cow, but I feel different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you're talking about that feeling of jitteriness or the sugarness. Part of what this does is tell you that you're full faster. And you really learn that real quick. Right. Like when, you know that feeling when you eat a big meal and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have had that last yeah. pile of whatever. <laughs> but this comes after a smaller meal. Right. So your, your brain is saying, okay, no more. And then over time, you're eating less. Right. And over time, your body should be accommodating to that. And for me, personally, that would mean I'd adjust my, my habits. Now, does that mean, you know, does that mean I don't want food? No. But it goes back to that same thing. You have, there's a, there's a desire and limitations to I mean, everything. I think that, yeah, I, I do agree tools exist for reasons. I mean, I'm not a big... Uh, 
I'm not Medication. very trusting I of big I pharma, and I don't think the science is there to say that these products yeah, are entirely. You might be we might, I might grow a third <laughs> year, and I'll be like, well, I lost 20 pounds, but I got an extra year. Right, and, and I'm it's, aware of it's that. It's trade-offs for everyone, right? But so, I also don't want to become diabetic. Right. You could also just change your head. I could. <laughs> but realistic, but I'm Which being... is why I'm asking if it's point B. Like, I think that people who say it's a tool, that's great. But then the work actually lies in, in not just coasting, but actually Doing. making the change. Oh, no, I agree. Right? So I agree. when you hopefully go off it, because it is right. a muscle-wasting product. Yes, you so have to. So it is you actually do have going to... to be really bad for you in the long term, You have to do opinion. muscle strengthening. Right, and eat a ton, ton of, of protein. <laughs> protein, sorry. You just said that. <laughs> a, a lot yes, of protein. Yes, much more protein. Good um, protein. So, so, so I think it's, it's. Yes, things are tools, but it can't just be a, uh, it's a, not a, a substitute because the I work agree. actually has to be there. Otherwise, the I don't changes disagree. don't right. take. I don't disagree. Right. And then it's like, well, oh, so it what, didn't the, take. What I knew there was somewhere as my brain was going. So when you're talking about like the sugar addiction and caffeine addiction, what I'm guessing, and I, I'm not a scientist by any means, right? But knowing how this does, and just the, some of the videos that we've watched from different people that are much more scientific than myself, um, I will not be surprised that if in the next, you know, two years, five years, whatever, that they don't find that they can also, if this is inhibiting um, hunger, can it also inhibit addiction, like uh, drug addiction? Can it inhibit oh, I think uh, um, it, I compulsive, think, uh, obsessive compulsive oh, disorder? Oh, I think it does. And wouldn't that be amazing if we could find a drug with the amount of people addicted to opioids and whatnot in this country, that you're going to take this drug and you no longer need... I mean, I think it actually already... I mean, I know it exists for alcohol. It's called naltrexone. It's been on the market, but it's not patented. Therefore, right. no one can make money. Therefore, right. you same don't with, know Same about with it, this, right? right? This is... So, I, and I actually think this glip inhibitor, I think it works the same. They don't... Similar. Quite know how any of right. it works, which is part of where I'm just like, what? Am I going to let someone control my brain in a way that means, like, I can't eat? when I didn't trust them two years ago with something else. So, it's, I mean, I, I agree. again, I it's, agree. it's incentives, I don't disagree, right? right. Um, and so I think, I know for me at least, when I lost the weight, you feel so much better that it yes. is motivating, it is. right? So it can become And that's that kind of where my brain was. I needed to get from here to here so that I could be more motivated because I, like, we're not young women. <laughs> and that's a whole other thing that I've learned so much about. And even Dan said it the other day that um, women's health at um, menopause, premenopause, postmenopause is virtually non-existent. Like we do not treat women as if they have a medical condition when they reach a certain age. We act like, oh, just suck it up and live with it. And I'm like... Um, our physiological system. <laughs> but but we do have a pill that'll keep you real hard. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like it just seems crazy that you know half of our population and this isn't a secret and it's been like this forever and it's just now where i think you're starting to see i think it's more in the nurse practitioner line where mm -hmm. they're like i Wait think a second, I'm, what's right. up why are you feeling yes. like you can't control your, your energy level or you're this or you're that maybe it's not just oh you should probably exercise or maybe it's not that you need a little more sleep or you should stop eating salt maybe it's that you literally have a physiological change in your body that we have to look at medically and say, you are not the same person you were physiologically I, than you were five years ago. Yeah, no. And, and I, ask any of us. And, and I think it's, uh, I actually think that's true about women's health uh, across our ages. And yep. I think that, you know, they came up with the pill and then just decided, oh, we're going to moderate um, people like, with that. Like uh, mold your hormones in this way. And, and, and we've, it, done, we've done a great disservice to woman. I just don't think we science. ever, it was anybody took, like, it, health was geared towards men. They were the 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 breadwinners and the workers, and the women were just home, and nobody cared. Think, well, I also think that science is uh, developing and evolving to a stage where instead of kind of waiting for some male doctor to tell you something, <laughs> you can get your blood yes. tests. You can, yes. uh, you can actually, and, and in fact not can, must self-advocate for yourself yes. you are like i say that to people yeah. all the time they go to the doctor and they go well the doctor said this i go did you ask them like not why? only but not only that like i watched a clip this morning and it was a, a it was a a, a, a principal at a, a 
public school, private school uh, in American terms in England and the UK. And he was the only principal who spoke out against vaccinating children, mm -hmm. school age children with COVID vaccines, because he was like, there is no risk to children. There's no statistical right. <laughs> risk. Like, why are we doing this? It's stupid. And he was the only one who spoke out. And then he actually in this clip said, you know, I was so surprised no one else spoke out. And it was mostly because everyone was afraid what other people would say about yep. them. And I was like, look, if you are more worried about what other people might yeah. say about you, then you are worried about what you Would think about, about right. you, then you are delusional. Right. Like, it's crazy. Like, people have I mean, to yes. reclaim themselves for well, themselves it's agency on like, that same note um i was listening to i don't know if it, i was listening to a couple different speeches i know i saw a tucker carlson interview with the guy from the heritage foundation whose name eludes me but um project 25 right. not trump's project right. Project 25 <laughs> that we, i said to victoria this morning that i never heard of until never the heard of until like, like three days like, ago the where they were started. yeah because like, they're what? trying to project make it a thing. what is this thing <laughs> it's so anyways um <laughs> anyways um Talking about, um, what were you just saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Project 25, 25. Trump. Uh, Gone. I don't remember. Uh, see, hormones. That's, see that? that's, no. No, no, um, that is science. Uh, it's not our fault. It was gone. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, it's, it's irrelevant. Um, but there are, you know, like you have to stop and think about uh, what people like what you think and how people think. And I can't remember what my point is. And I can well, picture I, I mean, but so it's basically, I mean, the point was, uh, people have to start claiming a sense of self-ownership again, a sense of agency, a sense of who you are, and forget about well, what other I people think. I know what think. it was. So right after uh, the assassination attempt on Trump, um, within hours, Elon Musk came out and endorsed Trump 100%. And some, they were talking about why do you think he did that, right? Besides the fact that he also pledged $45 million a month to the PAC for the next whatever many months so good luck with that um but they were talking about like why do why do these names do that and, and it, i think it was tucker carlson that was saying well because it gives agency to other people because you've been for years saying you can't support donald trump because you're evil and a racist and you're a bad bad person if you say you support trump but if other people start to say i support trump then it gives people agency to say well, I support Trump. So it's this ripple effect that shouldn't have to be. Right. But that's how tight we've wound people into not having their own agency. Yes. That we have to give them permission to have an opinion. Right. And also just, you know, let's just be candid. The left has their silent billionaires who have oh, actually yeah. created the communism we have in this country now. Soros, Zuckerberg. I mean, the Zuck bucks that went into the Freaking 2020 Microsoft elections. Man there. Um, Bill, uh, Bill Gates. Gates. I mean, and all his who, who, who crap. <laughs> so, um, so you know, just because there's some right wing doesn't mean there's not just people as much in the mix. On the, left. the billionaires are all there. They're all doing their own thing. What you got to figure out is what you. Yeah are going to do yep. you that's it all um, right so it's hot i think it's going to be hot but not as hot for the next week who knows um take a walk in the morning when it's cooler um we'll see you guys we'll again see you next week next week bye, bye. guys